All right, timing belt, cam belt, whatever you want to call it. Um, the belt that destroys your engine if it breaks. Yes, that one. Um, so with that frightening fact in mind, let's take a look at how to replace this thing. So what is a timing belt? Well, it's the belt that does exactly what it says on the tin. It keeps the whole engine in time, from the crankshaft to the camshaft uh, to the ignition system. And without it, or badly fitting it, will result in an engine that does not run. Uh, or worse yet, an engine that self-destructs, and by that I mean pistons will hit valves uh, and a great mess will ensue. But don't let that put you off, because as long as you're careful, there really isn't much to this job. Right, so first you might have noticed the engine is out of the car. Don't panic, it does not have to be to do this. It does, however, make it easier for me to show you where stuff is. So, where is the timing belt? Well, that's the timing belt, and it's a toothed belt, and on this particular engine, it engages with the crankshaft pulley at the bottom, the auxiliary pulley here, which drives the distributor, amongst other things, and then up to the camshaft pulley at the top. Now, the crucial thing to remember when performing this job is that these pulleys must remain in the same position whilst the new belt is fitted. Now, a lot of people mark them with Tipex, which you can do, uh, but the engine itself should have some sort of timing marks on it. And in the case of this engine, it has the TDC mark on the crankshaft pulley, the so-called moon and mountain on the camshaft pulley, and then for the auxiliary pulley, if you pop off the distributor cap, the rotor arm should now be pointing towards the notch in the distributor housing. Now these are basically the marks that you'd use if you wanted to static time the engine. Uh, so now I've got a reference point for each pulley, so in the unlikely case that they move, I can return them to the original position, and once you've done the same, well you can start removing the old belt. So firstly we need this crankshaft pulley out of the way, so undo this 19mm bolt. Uh, I've had to wedge a screwdriver in the ring gear at the back here to stop the engine rotating as I try and undo this. Uh, if the engine's in the car, put it in gear, put the handbrake on, that'll do the job just as well. Remove the bolt on the washer. Right now, sometimes these pulleys can be a real pain to get off, and you may have to resort to a gear puller, like this one. Well, thankfully mine slid right off. Uh, notice it's keyed, so it can only go on one way. And then there's a conical washer behind it too. Now pay attention to which way around that comes off, because you need to put that back in the same way. Now to remove the belt, slacken this bolt here. Uh, now you'll need one of these splined bits to do that. Now do the same with this 13mm bolt here. And then force the belt tensioner back against the spring to relieve pressure on the belt. And then retighten your lock nut. Okay, now you've relieved pressure on the belt, you should just be able to slide it right out of there. That's the old belt out of the way. Now you're ready to fit the new belt. Um, it's the same belt, in my case, just for demonstrational purposes. Uh, but it's worthwhile knowing if there's any writing on the belt, the general rule is to fit the belt so the writing is readable from the front of the engine. So once you're happy you've got the belt the right way round, I like to fit it as follows. So first off, engage the belt with the crankshaft pulley. Like so. Then keeping it taut, pull it up to the auxiliary pulley here round the auxiliary pulley, keeping it taut still, up to the camshaft pulley, engage it with the camshaft pulley, and then back over the belt tensioner. Just check everything's still engaged. 
which it is. Now you can slacken off the lock bolt on the tensioner to let it take up any slack. And leave that as so. Then you can refit your crank pulley. And double check your timing marks. Now I've double checked my timing marks and everything looks pretty good. Now you'll notice I haven't tightened down the lock bolt on the tensioner yet. That's because the belt needs tensioning and the correct way to do this according to the Haynes manual is to rotate the engine three times by hand and then tighten up these two bolts here. Uh, now I'm lazy so two times will do for me but don't forget this is a four stroke engine and the crankshaft rotates twice for every one rotation of the camshaft. So to do two full engine revolutions I've got to rotate the crankshaft four times uh, and make it easy on yourself. Remove the spark plugs. And now that's done, you can tighten down your lock bolt and the spline bolt um, and the belt should be correctly tensioned. <coughs> And congrats because that's essentially it. Now to be extra careful once you've turned the engine over by hand you can triple check your timing marks just to make sure nothing's amiss. Uh, and don't forget there's a torque spec for this crank pulley bolt at the bottom so you'll need to do that up to spec. Um, but like I said essentially uh, job done. Now if you're going to do it 100% correct after you start the car you should then check your ignition timing and if you're struggling with ignition timing check out Tech Tip 04. Awesome. I'll see you next time.